All right, it's time to try this inverter out for the first time. I have this power strip plugged into the output of it that'll allow me to plug in multiple loads and turn it on and off. I have my four gauge jumper cables uh, cut to uh, five feet in length. Uh, I said four feet, but uh, this is five feet. I can always cut it and make it shorter. I can't cut it and make it longer. Uh, I have it connected up to this uh, standard automotive car battery over here. Uh, it's not new, but I think it's in pretty decent shape yet. Uh, this is a group 78 size, 7834, the only difference being one is top lugs, one is side. I'm using the top lugs on it because it gives me a better connection for these alligator clips. And uh, I had mentioned that it's pretty much impossible to get this kind of power out of an automotive battery, so I'm giving it a little bit of help. I have my uh, 45 amp uh, battery charger connected up to it. This is not like the battery charger that you'll find at Walmart or your local auto, par auto parts store. This is a commercial quality uh, four-stage battery charger and regulated power supply. And like I said, this will get put out about 45 amps, uh, continuous. And uh, that's roughly equivalent to uh, having a car running. And it's much more convenient for me to have in my house than a car, so this will work out well for that. A typical automotive alternator is maybe 100 amps or so, and uh, at idle it may only put out uh, around 60 amps. The car itself takes a fair amount of juice. It takes uh, things for the, the heater fan, the engine computer, the ignition system, uh, all kinds of other little electrical loads. So we'll conservatively say that those take 20 amps, 60 minus 20, 40 amps. Uh, so this is roughly the same as a, a car at idle. So this setup here, standard automotive battery, a standard automotive alternator, uh, is roughly equivalent to uh, just connecting this up to your car battery. So that'll be my car stand-in over here. But uh, that's why I have it connected up that way. So let's take a look at the uh, inverter itself. It's all connected up to my battery. It's fully charged. Everything's hooked up. I'll turn it on. So we'll check uh, with my multimeter and see what kind of voltage this thing is outputting. It's supposed to be 115 according to the uh, specifications. And wow, that's impressive. Exactly 115. Um, this is an RMS uh, meter. You do need an RMS meter to properly measure the voltage of a modified sine wave inverter, any inverter. Um, I'm just going to demonstrate here what happens if you use a very cheap multimeter. This is just a really cheap one off of Harbor Freight. I think I paid two dollars for it or something like that. And uh, it's, it's very useful for multiple things, but it will not accurately read the voltage from, uh, from this inverter. 105 volts. That is incorrect. This is not an RMS multimeter and you cannot use it to measure the output voltage of anything except a sine wave. This is a modified sine wave and it won't work. So, just a note on that. Make sure you use an RMS meter. Many of them are anymore. They used to cost more, but uh, now they don't really cost a whole lot. So, out of curiosity, let's take a look at the, uh, the output waveform also. This is not an oscilloscope, it is a 10 year old multimeter scope meter that I think I paid $100 for 10 years ago, so it's not very advanced, but it works for uh, power applications like this. And it's quite useful, I'm glad I have it. If, uh, if anybody's priced out uh, oscilloscopes, you know that they're extremely expensive, so this is good enough for me. That is the uh, output waveform of it. That's a modified sine wave. And uh, it's about what I'd expect, 145 volts positive and negative with a, uh, a zero volt uh, transition period in between. So that's pretty typical of inverter like this. I'm going to try plugging in a couple different loads here. So first, I just have this uh, ordinary desk lamp. It's a, it has a 40 watt incandescent bulb in it. Plug that thing in and uh, turn it on. So. It is running. We still get 115 volts out at uh, 59 hertz. That's close enough. The waveform hasn't changed any, so that seems to work out well. I'm just going to set this, uh, actually I'll clamp this light onto the table, edge of the table here. So you should be able to see when this turns on and off. And now I'm going to grab uh, just a standard electric heater. Uh, this is a 1500 watt heater, 600 watts on low. 900 on medium, um, 1500 on high, and uh, I'll just plug that one in. And 
Here's the fan only setting. Seems to run. Turned on low. Right, I'm not sure if you can hear that, but the uh, fans in this uh, inverter just turned on. So they appear to be uh, load, turn on and off with uh, load, not just temperature. I'm not sure if they turn on or off with temperature, but uh, they do with load, so that's fine. Um, we'll see if they run faster when I turn this on medium. And they do. It's running much faster now. It's pretty loud, but that's fine. There's a pretty decent load on it. So uh, that's set up all right. Try high, that's 1500 watts. And my output voltage just dropped. You can read the multimeter. It's at uh, 109 volts. And that's also interesting. Uh, I'm not sure how close I can bring this with it still in focus, but you can see that the waveform goes up to 145 volts and then sags. Starts at negative 145 and then sags again. That's indicative of not having enough output capacitance. That uh, inside here, I'd open it up and said the output capacitors were probably adequate. They're clearly not adequate. This line should stay flat. Well, let's check one more thing. It's at 109 volts for some reason, but maybe that's loss in my uh, cable here. So let me try measuring directly on the output. leads in there. Nope, 108 volts. Still not adequate. What, uh, what is my incoming battery voltage? I know that this uh, single set of 4 gauge cables is not really adequate to power this inverter, but let's see what my input power voltage is. So I have 10.6 uh, volts at the inverter terminals. And let me check at my battery. Eleven point two volts at the battery. So all that remaining voltage is being lost through this short length, short length of a uh, four gauge power cable. And apparently the voltage just dripped low enough to the point where this inverter is unhappy with it, and it's beeping. Perhaps that's why the output voltage is uh, not correct. I'll turn my heater down to medium, which is 900 watts, and uh, see if this thing is outputting the correct voltage. I'll have to go to AC, though, to see that. And now it is at 115 volts again. So, most likely what's going on is the uh, uh, cabling to this inverter is not adequate for a 1500 watt load. I need to have better cables than this. Uh, the battery was at a pretty healthy voltage yet, so it's not a problem with the battery, it's, it's my cabling. Um, like I said, getting 2500 watts out of a 12 volt system is very difficult. One of the reasons why I bought this inverter instead of a competing mo model on the market is because it is specified to have a very low amp draw when uh, there's no load connected to it. That's very nice because it has uh, fans in it that turn off so it's very quiet and also it doesn't drain my battery if I have it plugged in for long periods of time with uh, no load on it. So I'm going to uh, check that. It's specified to have a 0.5 amp or less draw at no load, so I'll turn it on here. And it uh, seems to take a, a few seconds to boot up. Uh, the red overload light turns on immediately for a few seconds, but uh, there it goes. And that's really close, so I'll give that a pass. It is around 5 amps, or 0.5 amps, under uh, no load. And uh, really, I think that's pretty impressive for an inverter that's rated for 2,500 watts. Well, I let this inverter run for 15 minutes or so on that 600 watt load that I had it running at earlier, and uh, it, it never even got noticeably warm at all. So, obviously 600 watts is uh, not the least bit stressful for this 2,500 watt inverter, which is good, that's how it should be. But, uh, I don't know that this battery is really adequate to do additional testing with this. So I'm going to test my battery quick, and uh, the standard way to test a, an automotive battery for its output load capability, its cranking amp capability, is to put a load on it for 10 seconds and then measure the voltage of the battery after 10 seconds. So I'm just going to do that with this inverter. I have my uh, 1500 watt heater over here, I have it set on high, 
I can turn this power strip on and off, turn on and off my, my heater load. You can see that the battery, battery voltage is uh, over 13 volts. It still has some uh, surface charge left on it from being charged. So I'll turn my uh, inver inverter on. And I'm going to turn on my uh, 1500 watt load here for uh, 10 seconds or so and then read the uh, voltage after that amount of time has passed. And that's about 10 seconds. It's holding steady at 11.6 volts. I turn the load off and it should go back up to about 12.7, which is a fully charged battery. And it does. So 11.6 volts is what this battery does under load. So I'm going to see if I can find a different battery and redo this test. So I'll unhook this battery, set it aside, and bring in my other battery. I got this at uh, a local auto parts store where I get most of my car stuff. And uh, I actually got this on uh, Black Friday. They had a really good sale on it. I bought it for one of my vehicles, but uh, I didn't get around to installing it yet, so I'll use it for this. This is their uh, top series battery that they sell, so hopefully it should be pretty good. Let's check and see if it is fully charged or not. 12.9 volts, that should be fully charged. I'll turn on my uh, inverter. And I'll do this uh, 10 second load test again and see if this battery is any better than my previous one. And that one goes down to 11.4 volts. So this uh, AC Delco battery is appears to be in better shape than this. Autocraft Gold battery that I just bought and it has a recent date code on it too, so that's a little disappointing, but uh, Auto batteries do not reach their full potential until they've been cycled a few times, so it's very possible that I just need to uh, Complete the formation on these uh, battery plates by cycling it a few times in any case I'll go back go back to my other battery that one appears to be stronger Well if one battery isn't enough Then how about two batteries? I have uh, both of these batteries connected up to the inverter. I have both of the lugs populated now. I have now have two batteries connected to this thing. And I'm going to redo that load test one more time. I'm measuring the voltage at uh, just one of the two, two batteries uh, with one of the shorter cables. So I'll turn my uh, inverter on. And turn this on for 10 seconds, see what happens. And that is much better, 12.3 volts. Uh, I should also mention that I have this battery charger connected up also. So I'm doing everything that I can to give this inverter good power to, to uh, can do further testing with it. And uh, I guess realistically this is probably at least as good as anybody would do in a, a real life circumstance, having two batteries and a car running at the same time all connected up to your one one inverter, all with four gauge power cable. So I'm not uh, not going to do overkill and try anything past this. This is realistically as good as it's going to get.